Hello and welcome back to the Docker course of CodeMaven. Uh, my name is Gabor Sabo. This episode we are going to talk about uh, CronTab. CronTab is the scheduler of uh, Unix, Linux. It's, um, it allows us to uh, schedule some, some job to run periodically every sec, every minute, every hour, every day and so on. And sometimes uh, you would like to create some kind of a script, some kind of a program that will run periodically on your system. But you don't want to rely on the user of your Docker uh, image to know that needs to be scheduled. So you just want to embed uh, the scheduler inside the Docker image. How can we do that? Uh, we get to the slide so we can see uh, how it works. So first of all, I have, I have two files for this. One of them is called the crontop.txt, which uh, actually the name of the file doesn't matter. I just like to call it crontop.txt, doesn't matter. Inside you have uh, uh, the same layout, the same code or, or layout or content that a cron job usually needs to have. So, uh, and if you're not familiar, these five stars uh, actually say that run every minute something. And I won't go into the depths of what uh, actually it means. The first one basically means how which seconds to run, but uh, which minutes to run, but that doesn't matter. And then then there is the command. So this date. Um, command with the redirection is the actually command that needs to be executed that's going to be executed every minute if we install this configuration into the cron system of uh, our docker image and what this does again is runs the date command and and writes the output into this slash opt slash days.txt and because i have the two uh, arrows it appends to the to the date so it's not much it's just every sec every minute it will write the current date into that file now what do we have in in our docker uh, file we use ubuntu 20.04 doesn't really matter for not uh, up get, uh, update uh, to have all the new versions of the of the uh, packages uh, that come with ubuntu or actually that can be installed with ubuntu and then up get install minus y cron so you we already saw how to install various other packages so this time we just install the package that runs the cron tab the cron job okay and then what we need is uh, we need to install it uh, we need to configure this uh, docker image to run the cron job uh, for that we need the cron tab file uh, copied into the um, image we won't really need the cron tab file for the running but uh, for the configuration we, we needed it and then we call the run cron tab and then the slash opt uh, cron tab.txt so the file was copied to the slash opt directory right and um, inside the image and then the cron tab command is actually what loads into sort of the memory of the cron system uh, of that uh, docker image and at this point actually i could add a, a command to remove the cron tab.txt file from the disk because we don't need it anymore um, i didn't do that but that, it can be it could be done and then the command the cmd that actually needs to be executed when the application starts is a uh, cron minus f so cron and uh, running in the foreground uh, that's what it means uh, because the cron system uh, doesn't run in this docker uh, image in this docker container when you start it so you have to run manually run the cron system and that's how that's how you do it cron minus m and then it runs in the foreground because if it went to the background then your docker uh, container which just stop for working because it, it has nothing more to do background jobs don't count uh, for docker so we need to do build this this is in the cron tab directory so i switch to the window where uh, the terminal i get into the cron tab directory and just to show you this is the docker file and uh, this is the cron tab file that we already had so now i can run docker build build uh, minus um, t my docker uh, actually I, I think i used a different name here just for fun chronos okay chronos and uh, dot right this is um uh, this is what uh, sorry my docker doesn't matter okay just go with this the old thing my docker dot and dot 
Okay, it doesn't matter the name. Again, uh, uh, if you saw previous videos, uh, sometimes it takes a lot longer to build it because it has to download all kinds of things. This time it was pretty fast because we, I already built this uh, image several times, so it already used uh, the caching of uh, the previous builds. Okay, so now we have it, and now we can run, run this. So we run this, and here is how do we run it, how we run this. So we say docker run minus d, that means to put the docker in the background, because we don't need the docker to be in front of us, we don't care about it anymore. And then we also say minus minus rm, because we would like to get rid of the docker container when it's done uh, running. And then we give the we can give a name of it. So okay, so that's where I use the Kronos thing. So I give the name Kronos to the container that's actually running, and it's using the my Docker image to run. Okay, so now we put it in the uh, it's a daemon. That's that's why it's minus d. We put it in the background. So now if uh, we and this is the the SHA, this is the identificator of the currently running container. If I run now Docker ps. I can see that it's running. So it's not ps minus, minus a, it's not all the uh, dead containers, but it's uh, the container that we actually ran. This is the name of the image. This is the name of the container itself. And uh, this is how long it has been uh, running. So now it's running. And uh, what's next? So let's go to the slide to see. So the next thing that I wanted to show you is that it actually is creating this file. And uh, for this, I need to wait up till one minute Till the, till the cron actually starts running because it runs on every uh, full minute and uh, maybe we started it in two seconds after the minute and then it won't run it. So now I need to copy this uh, and what this does is so I say docker container copy and I tell it from which container, okay, so this is the name of the container, which file, so this is internally in the container and where to. And dot is there's this little dot that means the copy it locally. Sorry, I didn't copy it properly. Okay, so this is the command, and this copied from inside the container the file called dates.txt locally here. So now if I print out the com content dates.txt, then it's here. Okay, so this is the date, the time that actually was uh, recorded. Now I can remove this uh, here locally, okay? And uh, I don't know how, what is the time right now, so I'll try to co copy it again and see what's going on. And now it's already two, because apparently uh, another minute uh, passed, the full minute passed, so it added another file, another line to the uh, file. So that's that's it uh, about uh, running the uh, uh, cron um, job inside Docker. But uh, now we have this Docker container running and how can we stop it once we don't need it? And here is the last command from the style, docker container, stop, and the name of the container itself. So I just again copy paste, so you don't need to wait for me typing. And then, then it will take a, a couple of seconds till it actually stops the container, but then the container, container will be stopped and will be removed because originally we told it to remove after the container ends. So this is one way to run the cron job, and this is one way to run something that uh, needs to be executed, uh, but uh, can go into the background. So, but we, because we don't want uh, the Docker containers to stop working, we have to run it. We have to run it in the foreground. There is another way that people use, uh, often used to, for this, um, for commands that don't have such a way of moving in, moving to just to, for, uh, to the foreground. So sometimes we'd like to run an application, and then the run the application runs all the time in the background. But if the it runs in the background, then your Docker container will end. So instead of in, so it, so to keep the Docker container basically busy, this is what people do, and this is uh, basically al almost the same. Uh, so up till here, this is the same, but here we have a slightly different thing. So what we have is we create a file. The name of the file doesn't matter. So I used his, here jumanji.txt. It really doesn't matter. It's empty. The touch command just creates, well, it changes the date if the file exists, but if the file doesn't exist, it already creates the file. Empty. And then this is the command on the CMD. So we can run cron. 
without the minus f because it's not in the foreground. Now it goes to the background. Ampersand ampersand tells uh, Linux that if the first one was successful, so it started to run, then run this command as well. And this command is just running tail minus f on the uh, jumanji.txt uh, file. So tail minus f is actually the f following the file. And um, I, I'm not even sure if minus f means follow or foreground, but I guess it's follow. Uh, it means just it waits for the file to get more lines and would, be dis would display them. Of course, there are no uh, more lines coming in, so it won't do anything, but that's good enough uh, for us. So this is, a, this is a standard or standard, I don't know, I've saw it a couple of places, a trick to run something that, that runs in the background, but then again create something basically fake that will run in the foreground and keep Docker image the Docker container busy, so it will keep uh, running. Um, and that's it. Uh, you, could, you could actually do the same uh, play uh, what we did earlier, but it's not, it doesn't really matter. It's, uh, actually, that's going to be your exercise now. So go ahead and uh, try this and uh, try specifically this version and see if it works on your computer as well. Thank you for watching and uh, let's see you in the next uh, video soon.